The ancient Greeks were some of the first to theorize about light and vision. They saw light as a ray moving from one point to another in a straight line. There were two main arguments. Pythagoras said that vision was light rays emerging from a person's eyes and striking objects. Epicurus disagreed, saying it was objects which produced light rays which then traveled to the eyes. Euclid and Ptolemy used ray diagrams to show how light bounces off of a smooth surface and how it bends as it passes from one transparent medium to another. A few hundred years later in present day Iraq, Arab scholars built on the ideas by the Greeks and developed geometrical optics, where lenses, mirrors, and prisms are used to manipulate light. The most famous of these scholars was a man called Ibn al-Haytham. Also known as Al-Hazin, Ibn al-Haytham lived in present-day Iraq from AD 965 to AD 1039. Like Epicurus before him, Ibn al-Haytham agreed that vision was the process of light rays bouncing off of objects to a person's eyes. By the 17th century, European scientists began to think differently about light. Enter Christian Huygens, a Dutch mathematician astronomer. Christian published his treatise on light, in which he described the undulatory theory. In this theory, Huygens speculated on the existence of some invisible medium, an ether, filling all empty spaces between objects. He went on to say that light forms when a luminous body causes a series of waves or vibrations in this ether. These waves move forward until they encountered an object. If said object happens to be an eye, vision would be stimulated. This stood as one of the earliest and most eloquent wave theories of light. However, not everybody agreed with it. Sir Isaac Newton was one of those people. Newton proposed light as particles. After all, light bounces off of objects much like a ball bounces off a wall. But even then, no one had ever seen such particles. This was easily explained. Perhaps these particles were too small. Or they moved too fast to be seen. Perhaps our eyes could see right through them. As it turns out, all of these theories are both right and wrong and all of these scholars have contributed to our understanding of light and vision through time.